Hello, my name is Cheryl Turner. I'm a second degree black belt uh, with Silver Strand Dojo International at the YMCA downtown. Um, I work with uh, children and adolescents and I have been in the martial arts for uh, off and on about 25 years um, and have focused the last 10 years in specifically working with children um, in Taekwondo. When I am working with children um, it is important for me to not only focus on technique, um, safety, and self-defense, but also to bring in an aspect of um, self-discipline and respect and dignity. And through my teaching, I'm able to bring these things into their lives. Um, many of the children in today's society don't have a concept of self-respect um, and self-understanding. And so through my teaching each and every day, I'm able to do this. The children that I work with, um, we really focus a lot on um, you know, striking techniques, kicking techniques. Uh, we work on groundwork, self-defense. Um, most importantly, we also always work on safety, but we also look at um, self-discipline. We work, we look at um, self-respect. We look at flexibility, um, confidence, um, self-discipline, and all of these things. And we bring all this together to make each of these kids um, the best individuals they can be. One of the key areas we teach our students in the intermediate belt levels is weaponry. Uh, the first weapon we have children working with is the bong mongi or the short stick. This weapon is made of rattan and is very lightweight yet very durable. By training with this weapon we are allowing our students to become familiar with a weapon of convenience. For example, it can be found anywhere as well as many of the techniques can be carried into training with a sword if they choose to move forward in this art. The techniques I am demonstrating with my partner Molly, age 12, is the Bong Mongi 10 count form. This form provides students an opportunity to take basic weapons technique and move beyond the technique itself to a state of instinct, movement, and flow. The first important thing to notice in working with this weapon is stance. Both partners are utilizing an open fighting stance with feet approximately shoulder width apart. The bong mong yi should be held in the three quarter position with the dominant hand holding three quarters of the way down the weapon. The weapon should rest just above the shoulder but not on the shoulder. Defensive hand should be in the open and ready position. The first set of techniques will include partner A striking with a number 8 strike to the head. This is a direct strike to the top of the head. Partner B will defend with a roof block, ensuring that defensive hand, the non-weapon hand, rests on top of the weapon hand and the weapon lays directly across the muscular part of the arm. This block should sit high enough to block the head, but not too high that it could pass through. The next set of techniques will involve partner B striking with a number two strike to the base of the neck. Partner A will block with a number two static block. This block should be held straight up and down. Next, partner A will follow through the block and strike with a number four strike to the floating rib. This number four will chamber under the arm and connect on the opposite side of the partner. Partner B will perform a number four slot block. You will notice that the partner will sweep back with the number two, which is the back leg, and reposition themselves for this block. This allows the defender to have a direct block. The defender will slap the weapon down with their weapon and slap the attacker's hand with their open hand. This allows the weapon to be redirected in a downward motion. The hand slap is important in case the weapon misses its target, the hand will still redirect the attack. The completion of the number four slap block sets up partner B perfectly for the start of the next set of techniques. Partner B will attack with a number nine strike to the stomach and sternum area. Partner A will utilize the circle block to deflect this block, also known as the witch's stir. Lastly, partner A will circle out of the circle block and rotate up to complete a number eight strike to the head. Partner B will block this with a shoulder block. The important aspects of the shoulder block is to utilize the open hand to guide the attacker's hand towards the defender's weapon along the shoulder. 
This control will allow for a controlled block. Upon completion of the shoulder block, partner B can immediately move to a number 8 strike to the head and the cycle begins again, with partner A now completing a roof block. Once students have mastered the art of the 10 count form, they should begin to add flow and movement. Once they are able to move around the floor and allow this process to become instinct, they will have mastered this form. This form can be broken down into a 6 count and an 8 count form to help teach the steps before moving into all 10 counts. Young students who master this form often find themselves more confident in their use of the bang mangi as well as in their overall mastery of the arts. As I continue to teach the young minds of the art of Taekwondo, I always remind myself that this is the generation that will be the leaders, and it is up to us to train them to be the best individuals they can be. With that, I would like to thank uh, Shihan Ray Silverstrand for his continued support. I would like to thank the instructors and students of Silverstrand Dojo for their continued support and dedication. I would like to thank the children that allow me to shape their minds. I'd like to thank the parents that allow me to teach their children. And I would like to thank uh, Testing Tree Productions.